Brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know that it's a command in the New Testament to be immovable? It's a command. Be immovable. Everything in this world will be moved. Everything. There is one thing that will last, and that is truth. But we must be built upon a true, solid foundation. What you're building on is not just text, theory, good ideas, and human philosophies. You're building upon the efficacy, the power, the authority of Jesus. It's a person. You are standing on him. Anything fixed to that person will last with him. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. God is likened to a rock. His word is likened to a rock. And a rock doesn't change from generation to generation. It's like, oh, I just really want to be climbed upon. You know, and if I don't have the look in this generation, then they might not like me. Rocks don't care about that. And you know what? God isn't attempting to win a popularity contest. He just is who he is. He's not going to change to match our likes and dislikes. He is. Let's get it straight. God does not alter. God does not shapeshift. God's truth is a reflection of who he is, and in it is no shadow of turning, just like him. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Christians, well, they're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, he has given us everything we need to behave as we ought to behave. So as a result, we can be as he is, though we are not as he is, by our nature and the way we are outside of him, we can be as he is when we turn unto him and he fills us with his grace. And he enables us to live lives that otherwise would be impossible. God stabilizes our life. He takes us from going up and down and all over the place to suddenly boom. He rivets us. He drills us in to his bedrock. And he begins to build us the way his nature is revealed in scripture. And he says, no more are you a wave of the sea tossed to and fro. Get to know the power of Jehovah and he will stabilize your life and he will build you as rock. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He, meaning the righteous, shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Do you know how often we get evil tidings? They come through television, they come through newspapers, they come through whispers and conversations around you, they come through emails, and they come and they can actually renovate our perspective. It's amazing, but you could be in a great mood, feeling wonderful about life, and an evil tiding can come and completely destroy your life. What's funny is your life is the exact same as it was, but an evil tiding came in and warped your worldview. And now suddenly you're under the weight of this ridiculous thing. It's petty, it is, but it's controlling you. You've been bullied around by evil tidings far too long in your life. You know what you do when an evil tiding comes? You leap for joy. What do we do? We leap for joy. The world could collapse for all we care, but our God's not going anywhere. If we live with integrity, we have nothing to fear. No matter how loud they shout. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion the chief cornerstone, elect, precious. Now listen closely. He that believes on him shall not be confounded. To be put to shame is what this means. To be disgraced, to have hope meet with failure. This is what we're afraid of. And this is what the enemy says is our fate if we build upon Jesus. See, what's, what's the bait of the enemy? What if he doesn't come through for you? Oh, what if, what if, that's wishful thinking. What if God isn't all that? What if God stops doing these things for his saints? Oh, there's all sorts of things the enemy throws at us. It says, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Take it to the bank. We will not be moved. No matter what is happening in this world, we will not be shaken by it. Will we be tested? Yes. But that doesn't mean we move from the rock upon which we 
we stand. When bullets start flying, people start screaming. And if bullets started whizzing through this room, how would a room full of Christians respond? God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. It says, therefore will not we fear, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. That is immovable. You must know your Savior. You must know what to build upon. And if you build upon the rock, you will not fall. You will not be moved. That is your confidence. It is faith in Him. We believe the Word of God. It says it. It's right. We're fixed. Immovable. We will not budge when the earth and the sky are peeling away. And just hear the screams. You can hear everyone panicking. You are not. You're fixed to the eternal one, Jesus Christ. And when the winds and the rains beat against you, your house will not fall. Be still and know that I am God. Be fixed. Be resolute. Be immovable. The earth can peel away. But you are fixed to the God of Jacob. He is your refuge. There is never a bad moment for a Christian. Every moment is an opportunity for leaping and rejoicing. Every single moment. 